Hello everyone. I'm spending the day with a very special type of car today. A Tesla electric car. This car is very, very fast. We're going to learn lots of amazing things about electric cars today. But first, let's have a look inside. Wow! Look at those doors! That's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I think it's worth doing a Gecko Instant Replay on that. Woohoo! These are called Falcon Wing Doors because they look like a bird's wings. And they're designed to open in even really small spaces. Inside the car there's the usual things you'd find. Comfy seats, a steering wheel, pedals, but also this really big screen in the middle which lets you do important stuff like look at the map to see where you're going and play amazing music like toddler fun learning. Listen to the chorus of the Brontosaurus and the Stegosaurus down by the swamp along comes a dinosaur making such a loud most cars that you see on the road are powered by petrol or diesel, which means they have noisy engines with dirty fumes that come out of the exhaust at the back. Electric cars are completely silent and run on electricity. There's no visits to the petrol station for these cars. All you need to do is plug them in and charge the battery inside. It's just like charging a phone. A battery is something that stores energy until it's needed. You'll find batteries in lots of things. I bet there's a lot of batteries in some of your toys. Once the car's plugged in, the screen shows you just how long is left to fully charge. This electric car is a Tesla Model X and it's got a really big battery inside, which is what helps it go really, really fast. This car can get to 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 2.9 seconds. This is what 2.9 seconds feels like. Go! Wow, that was fast! Do you know where a car's engine is usually kept? Yes, it's usually in the bonnet in the front of the car. Let's have a look what's in here. Hold on, look at that, it's empty, there's no engine. Tesla cars have electric motors instead, which are connected to the wheels. The bottom part of a car which is connected to the wheels is called a chassis. This is a chassis without the rest of the car on top. The motor sits here and the big battery sits here. One day we'll all be driving around in electric cars because they're better for the planet. Instead of using dirty fuel which creates pollution, very clever engineers have invented amazing new ways of creating electricity. One of the best ways is to use the power of the sun to charge our electric cars. All across the world there are fields of solar panels which point towards the sky they convert sunlight into electricity. Solar panels are amazing. You can even put solar panels on your roof at home. Now all of this is really important, but sometimes you just want to see a car do a little dance. And this Tesla has a secret dancing mode just for fun. I've loved learning all about these amazing electric cars today. Thanks very much to all the team at Tesla for showing us just what they can do. We'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! I'm here at Claremont Farm today to learn all about tractors. 
tractors are the most important vehicle on the farm. They help farmers like Andy and his family do really big jobs, like planting a whole field of potatoes. Let's get out on the road! Oh dear, I think I'm on the wrong tractor. Andy? Ah, here's Andy now, with a much newer blue tractor. Andy, can you show us round your beautiful tractor, please? OK, the front of the tractor. These are the heavy weights. So if we're picking up machinery at the back, we don't want the tractor to flip up. So these keep it all straight and on the ground. These are our lights. Sometimes we have to work at night and we need as much light as possible. So not only do we have the headlights, but we have spotlights at the top as well. This is the exhaust pipe. We don't want the exhaust at the back with all the machinery, so we keep it up front here and it's high so we're not breathing in the fumes. This is the huge tractor tire with big tractor tread here. If it's really wet and muddy in the field, we need as much traction as possible because we don't want to be slipping. The back of the tractor. This is where we connect all the implements. This is called three-point linkage. One, two, three. This goes down and picks the machinery up at the back. And this is my tractor. Thanks, Andy. Tractors can drive on roads, but muddy fields are where tractors can really get to work. The huge wheels mean they'll never lose grip, no matter how sticky it gets. But that doesn't stop it being really bumpy. Whoa! In the spring, it's time for the farmers to get into the tractor and plant some seed potatoes. They drive in straight lines, creating these lovely neat rows. Imagine doing all of this planting by hand. It would take ages. But luckily, with the help of a tractor, you can plant a whole field in just two days. Deep under the ground, those little potatoes are busy spreading and growing into lots of new potatoes all throughout the year. Farmers rely on the changing of the seasons. Spring, summer, autumn and winter to help their crops grow. It's now autumn and the leaves are falling off the trees. Out in the fields, we're going to be using the tractor to dig up the potatoes that we planted. They've been growing all summer long. You can put all sorts of different equipment onto the back of a tractor. And today, the farmer's attaching a huge potato harvester. Now we're connected, it's away we go! The tractor pulls along the harvester as it pulls out the potatoes from the ground. The potatoes shoot up through the harvester and make their way down this conveyor belt where the farmer checks all of the potatoes. He throws away any bad ones. Once all the potatoes are collected, the harvester lifts them up and tips them into a trailer. The farmer then hooks up the trailer and takes the potatoes back to the farmyard. Back at base, the farmers open the trailer up and push the potatoes onto another conveyor belt that creates a massive potato mountain. Think of all the mashed potato you can make out of that. Now let's have a look at how you drive a tractor. So this is my tractor cab. This is my steering wheel. And all modern tractors now have power steering, which means that it's easier to turn the big wheels in the field. Here, this red lever, this means the tractor can go forward or back, forward or back. Here, this is where we turn the lights on. On this side, we have the hare and the tortoise. This is slow and this is fast. We have 15 different gears on a tractor. It's from very, very slow to fast on the road. So 
Do you remember seeing that big mountain of potatoes? Well, we can't see them now. And here they are. So we have to cover the potatoes with straw. The straw keeps them nice and warm to stop the frost getting in during the winter, but it also stops the light getting in. If a potato sees the light, it turns green and then we can't eat it. So it has to be completely dark. Once the potatoes are ready, they make their way to the kitchen where they're washed, peeled and chopped into chips by the chefs in the kitchen. Look at that! Fresh potatoes straight from the field and onto the plate. Yum! I've loved learning all about the different jobs that a tractor can do on the farm. Without these amazing vehicles, farmers wouldn't be able to grow all of those tasty vegetables that end up on your plate. Thanks very much to Andy and everyone at Claremont Farm for teaching us all about their tractors. We'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! I'm travelling around on a very special fun bus today. This double-decker bus has been transformed into a soft play party bus. This is Paul and he's the driver of the bus. He drives to lots of different places for children's birthday parties. You can have a party anywhere. Here comes the bright yellow party bus now. Welcome aboard the party bus. There are two floors on this bus, a downstairs and an upstairs. Let's climb the stairs and take a look upstairs first. Whoa! It's so much fun up here. There's a tunnel, a rope bridge. These are called biffers and bashers. Hey, Red Mechanical, how did you get in here? Red Mechanical never misses a party. To get down, we can either go back down the stairs or we can go down the mega green slide. Go on, Red. You can test it out. Woo! When you come down the green slide, you land in a colourful ball pool. Look! Red Mechanical is holding a green ball. This is an orange ball. And here's a purple ball. The fun doesn't stop there. Downstairs, there's more places to run around and climb. Paul's getting the bus ready for a party, so it's time to connect the bus to a generator. A generator is something that uses fuel to generate electricity. That means Paul can turn the disco lights and music on in the bus. Here come the kiddies now, ready to party. Put your shoes in there for me, please. You okay? Running round the play bus, everyone's very hungry, so it's time for some party food. 
these tables upstairs are just right for enjoying some sandwiches. Paul places yellow paper plates on the table. One, two, three, four. And again, one, two, three, four yellow paper plates. Now Paul is placing down orange drinks. One, two, three, four. And they need red straws. One, two, three, four. Four red straws. Yum, yum. Before everyone leaves, there's one last thing to do. Give out the party bags. We can't have a party without party bags. Phew! After all that excitement, I'm ready for a lie down. Thanks very much to Paul for showing us around his fantastic double-decker party bus. We'll see you again soon. Bye!